Hi, this is Tim. Uh, today we're going to go through wiring a sub panel and wiring branch circuits. Now this is a little different than our typical video because we normally do industrial controls and PLC programming, but I've had a lot of maintenance guys ask me if I could do kind of a primer on basic household electrical wiring and what tools you would need. A few things before we get started, make sure you check your local electrical codes because not only does electrical code vary from state to state, it also varies from locality to locality in states. So what I'm showing you here may not hold true where you're at. Also consider getting an electrician to do the work for you. Somebody who's good at their job will save you a ton of time and make sure that you're safe with all your wiring. Uh, in fact, um, I am a licensed electrician, but I don't actually use my license. We normally build UL508A industrial control panels. And when we are having them installed on site, we usually hire licensed electricians that do this every day to do our wiring. I just want to go through some basics of the tools that you need and you know just how to wire a basic sub panel circuit breaker. First I like to use these long 7 8 drill bits that have the pulling bit on the front of them. Also uh, get you a high quality one. This one this particular one is a Greenlee. They haven't actually uh, sponsored this video but it's a good quality bit. Uh, it, set, it calls itself a nail eater, but I'm going to warn you, make sure you try to avoid nails with these because these bits are expensive. And while this one may say it's a nail eater, nails will dull these super fast. And then since I'm only going to drill a few of these, I'm just going to use a typical cordless drill. Then I'm going to drill through each stud. And you want to be as close to the center as the stud as possible. Then in this case, we're supposed to put these 42 inches from the ground. That is just the specification that was given to us by the owner. Then also, they want a 220 outlet right below. Then over here by the door, we're gonna have a two gang box and one will be for the inside light and the other for the outside light. We're running 20 amp circuits, so we're gonna use the this 12-2 Romex. A modern Romex, uh, they are color coded. Uh, some of your older Romex won't be, uh, but typically white is um, 14 gauge, which is good for 15 amps. Yellow is 12, which is good for 20 amps. Now I'm just throwing these amperages out there, not considering distance. Uh, if you're gonna run this like a thousand feet, you might need to do a voltage drop calculation. Here's where it's great um, to consult an electrician to figure out for sure what you should be using. We are just going to loop it through the wall all the way down to the end. Once you have all your wires in the box, you're going to want to put a staple. And in our case, we want it within six inches of the box. Now you don't want to smack it and smash it down. You just want it to bring it up snug to it. Also, you want to make sure that it all looks tidy, even though even if it, even when it's going to get covered up later. Just make sure it all is stapled up really nice. It just looks really good for the inspector. So we got all our wires here and you'll notice in the box there's a bunch of holes already knocked out and just kind of laying there. So we're just going to take some of those out. And I'm sure somebody will tell me that there's a proper tool to do this with, but I usually just knock it out with the hands and then pull it out. When it comes to going through the box, you have this type here, which is kind of a newer wet style um, connector. And then you also have your traditional Romex connector. Just tighten it down. Also, they want an outside receptacle on this and you can buy this whole kit and this is just well worth it. That way you get, get back and you're not forgetting a bunch of parts. It includes the box with the plugs for all the holes you're not using, a ground fault receptacle and a weatherproof cover. All right, we have our power wires for our sub panel ran now. I'm not going to bore you with connecting each wire, but I do want to go through a couple things. This right here is, since it's a sub panel, the neutral 
and the ground are not the same. So most of them will come with some type of long screw like this, which is meant on a main panel to be ran, let's see, uh, this one, it's right here. So normally you'd run this screw in here and this bonds in neutral to the case. But since this is a sub panel, we'll keep those separate. So we don't use that. And we're gonna install this ground bar here. And if you look around, you'll see these two spots here. You'll easily find that there's a dimple somewhere. In this case, it's right here. And the other two screws will line up. So this middle one gets against this raised spot here. And then the other two get screws. Also, when determining the wire size, you need to consider the distance that you're pulling. So don't go off your general rule that you hear of. That number 14 is 15 amps, number 12 is 20, number 10 is 30. That really doesn't work, especially on feeders where you may be running big distances. Uh, I'll put a link in the description to a um, chart you can use to figure out which size wire you need for the distance you're running. This is copper wire, so we don't need to use an anti-corrosive on it, but if you were running aluminum, then you would um, need to put some on the end of it, and I'll put a link to some of that in the description also. And every panel needs a ground rod. And I've just got this shoved outside for now. We'll go outside and show you more about that. But for now, I'm just gonna run this in and trick it up to the ground as well. All right, now that we have all our wires in the panel, we are gonna go through just a short thing on household power. You'll notice you have double pole and single pole breakers. So coming in, you have one leg of 120 here, and that's 120 from here to this white neutral wire. And over here, this is another leg of 120. So from here to here, you have 120. But between the two of these, you will have 220. So when you use a double pole breaker, it pulls off of both of these legs for 220 power. And a single pole, you're gonna go between the breaker and this bar right here, which is our neutral bar, and that's gonna give you 120. 220 is like stoves, hot water heaters, air conditioners, bigger loads like that, and 120 is your wall outlets, uh, dishwashers, refrigerators, microwaves, things like that. So along with that, each one has a rating on it. You can see here, this is a 30 amp double pole, and this is a 20 amp single pole. So the 30 amp is actually gonna to go to this orange wire, which is number 10. And these 20s are for this yellow 12 too. And so to install them, they get a little tab here and they just snap in. Now the good thing about a single phase panel is breaker placement doesn't matter that much, especially in households. Now, if it was an industrial application, I'd say, yeah, we may need to look at loading and balancing. Uh, but typically household ones uh, don't need a lot of concern about that. But if this was a three phase panel, then breaker pl placement could matter. And we may do a video about breakers and three phase panels. And then if, uh, if I was an electrician for my day job, I'd have a nice Romex stripper, but I don't have one. So I simply take a knife and cut the insulation off of it. Now uh, here's where you'll separate the pros from the amateur. And I'm going to tell you I'm on the amateur side. And maybe I'll even somewhere here I'll post some pictures of some just outstanding breaker panels where every wire is just perfectly lined up. Um, they've got a lot of practice. And I just don't have that much practice or that much patience. But you do want to try to make them as neat as possible. Also, one thing to note while I'm thinking about it, I'm gonna describe a little more of how to do it on this side because you can see better. One thing I just thought about, only one wire should go into a breaker. So if you need to add a new circuit, don't add it to an existing breaker. Go ahead and get you an extra breaker. If you don't have any room in your panel, they make piggyback breakers that are pretty much two breakers in one space. And if you still don't have room, then yeah, contact an electrician and see what you can work out. Now when it comes to the double pole breaker, 
instead of hooking the white wire to the neutral, we'll actually hook it to the other pole. So we're going to bring these up here and the black will go to the first one and the white will go to the second one. And then you still hook your ground up the exact same way as you would on a single pole breaker. So even though these breakers are on this side, I'm going to still hook the ground up over here. There actually are provisions for grounds on both sides of this, but on this panel I'll only put one in. I didn't make it outside to talk about the ground rod that was on the other side of that bare copper wire, but outside of your panel there should be a bare copper wire that comes down and goes to a ground rod, which is actually right there and they're about eight ten foot long they need to go all the way in the ground in other words don't be one of those short cutters that like it gets difficult five foot in and that you saw the end of it off and then you hammer it to mushroom it to make it look like you drove all the way in that's just dirty and trust me i've ran into issues on systems that are like that also depending on your locality and the soil type you may need a second ground rod and i'm a controls guy so i always put a second ground rod in now the electrician's gonna be like no way that's extra money extra time but no i've got a line buried here and it runs out it needs to be at least the length of the ground rod and you'll see a second ground rod right here so grounding is always important for controls people, but yeah, electricians will probably argue with me on that one. Hope it gives you a little insight into how a typical breaker panel or sub panel works and how you would install it. Again, if you have a project and you're not real comfortable with electricity or with any step of the process, contact a local electrician. They're well worth the money. Like I said, when we're installing a control panel, we usually use a local electrician. But this is a little bit different video than normal. So let me know what you think of it in the comments. Uh, please hit that like button and subscribe to our channel. We put out at least one automation video a week. Till next time. Hi, this is Tim. And this is Amber of TW Controls. We run the automation store. Hey, thanks for finding our channel. Here's a playlist with some similar videos. And YouTube thinks you'll like this video. Please like our video and subscribe to our channel. And if our videos have helped you make some money and you're not using our products, please consider supporting us on Patreon. Till next time. See ya.